Welcome to Hope from History, where the ancestors teach, yes you can, because yes we did. Addie Banks presents early black entrepreneurs who have a history and business story to share. Madam Sarah Spencer Washington, as she was widely known, was an extraordinary black entrepreneur that you may not have heard about. She was honored as one of the most distinguished business women in the country at the 1939 New York World's Fair. Sarah was born in Beckley, West Virginia in 1889 to Joshua and Ellen Douglas Phillips. As a girl, she attended public schools in the area before going to the Lincoln Preparatory School in Philadelphia. She attended Norfolk Mission College in Virginia and earned a bachelor's degree in business administration from Northwestern University. Washington studied advanced chemistry at Columbia University. She is distinguished from other hair care beauty divas because of her chemistry training. In 1913, when her mother became ill, they moved to Atlantic City, New Jersey for the restorative, soothing ocean air said to be beneficial to the sick. She made this her lifelong home. Sarah worked as a dressmaker, but Atlantic City excited opportunities in young Sarah to succeed. There, she found a thriving black middle class on the north side. Washington was the definition of entrepreneur. Inspired by the success of Madam C.J. Walker, she opened a one-room beauty shop. She was able to grow her business by working in the salon during the day and going door to door in the evening selling beauty products that she made. During the early years, she experimented with a variety of products, always searching for the best hair and skin care lines to enhance her targeted and very lucrative market, Black women. By 1919, Sarah Washington had started building the Apex Empire. She adopted a model that diversified her business interests. Early on, she started Apex Hair Company and Apex Beauty Products Company to market her hair and cosmetic business. Then, Apex News and Apex Publishing Company. Behind this, Apex College in multiple locations and Apex Drugstore in Atlantic City. With Washington's in-depth knowledge of chemistry, she eventually obtained patents for her hair pressing oils and scalp creams that proved to be advancements on existing methods of hair straightening. She developed an extensive line of products. Washington employed over 215 women and men in the Atlantic City area and was the largest Black-owned business in New Jersey and was one of the nation's largest Black-owned manufacturing companies in the 1930s. The Apex Laboratory manufactured over 75 products from raw materials. Washington created products that were in demand. Her signature Apex product and most successful item in the line was Glossatina. This was a hair pomade that became a go-to business product across the country. Lastoria hair oils, scalp creams, a curl remover system, skin bleach, and hair growth formulas became rapid sellers among Black American women. Her line also included pressing oils, hair combs, perfumes, beauty creams, and lipsticks. Prices ranged from 35 to 50 cents. Apex advertised that their system and products could bring weekly earnings of 60 to 90 dollars a week, a great deal in those days, more than the average white man earned. 
In addition to Washington's factory compound, where the laboratory, manufacturing operations, warehouses, distribution, and management offices were located, she had beauty colleges in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Philadelphia, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Richmond, Baltimore, and Newark. She even set up a beauty college in Cuba and Johannesburg, South Africa. Her colleges graduated about 4,000 students each year. Ad stated that students could sign up with a small down payment and attend morning, afternoon, or evening sessions to make it convenient for all. Consider the Apex sales force. After graduating students were trained to use Apex products, Washington supported them in opening a beauty salon. Product sales boosted income for shop owners. But Washington also had thousands of independent agents. According to a 1946 newspaper report, she had more than 45,000 sales agents around the world. Beauty colleges also had product stores for walk-in customers and their regular hair clients. A mega building located on Indiana and Arctic Avenues in Atlantic City showed off Apex Drug Store. The color postcard displays a modern and impressive corner brick exterior and large print sign, Apex Community Drug Store. It displays the pharmacy, a luncheonette area, an expensive soda fountain with red cushion bar stools. And of course, they provided a full line of merchandise found in any city drug store. APEC products were sure to have been highlighted there. Washington was self-sufficient, if anything. It was part of her business strategy. Consider Apex Publishing Company not only handling all of her product labeling, print advertising, and administrative printing, but also published a trade magazine. Apex News Magazine could be found in beauty salons across the country and sold for 15 cents. Between the pages, as expected, were lots of Apex product campaigns. The magazine reported news stories of interest to the Black community, giving widespread coverage of trade articles featuring hairstyles, fashion, and makeup. Not stopping there, Washington included the latest in interior design. This was a great place to showcase the success of graduates and pepper inspirational articles, cartoons, and the obligatory letter from the editor. Meet the lady with a capital L. Sarah Spencer Washington was a woman among women. She stood tall and erect, and some claimed that her mild bulk, with grace, was somewhat imposing. She worked hard and demanded the same from her staff. Students were admonished to be their best. Madam was not cowed by the power structure of the time that sought to limit her. Therefore, when whites in Atlantic City excluded Blacks, Washington started her own calendar of social events so that Blacks, locals, and tourists could enjoy the resort town. In 1946, she bought the upscale Brigantine Hotel, later the Legacy Vacation Club, for $70,000 and created the first integrated beachfront in Atlantic City. After being discriminated against at a local golf course in the 1940s, she founded her own golf course, the Apex Golf and Country Club, later home to Pomona Golf for patrons of all races. When Blacks participating in the Atlantic City Boardwalk Easter Parade were overlooked for prizes awarded for Easter finery, Washington started an alternative parade for residents and businesses on the north side, complete with champagne brunch and fashion show. But ever the businesswoman, her Apex company sponsored the first black float in the Atlantic City Easter Parade in 1947. Offend Madam Washington? 
I think not. Washington's success made her a high-profile figure in the 1930s and 40s, though she was still barred from whites only restaurants and beaches. But the madam used her clout and power to push for equal rights, demanding a seat at a restaurant so others could sit too. She made waves at Captain Starnes, a white-only Atlantic City seafood restaurant that refused to seat her. Washington was at the center of legal actions that led to ending racial bans. A front-page headline from the 1945 Atlantic City Telegram displayed the story with Madam Washington Kills Race Ban at Starnes Restaurant. Giving back was what she did. Washington opened Apex Rest, a nursing home for the elderly in Atlantic City. It was also a resort with a dancing pavilion, tennis courts, croquet, and its own farm in Egg Harbor, New Jersey. The farm supplied produce for her drugstore, restaurant, and hotel. She donated 20 acres of her own farm as a campsite for black youth supporting education as part of the National Youth Administration, a component of New Deal programs. Madam Washington paid for the distribution of truckloads of coal to poor families to heat their homes during harsh winter months, sometimes dropping coupons for coal from airplanes into the community. During World War II, Washington raids hundreds of thousands of dollars in saving bonds and bought her own $10,000 bond. Sarah lived a very private personal life. Born Sarah Phillips, yet her news obituary announcement carried the name Sarah H. Spencer Washington Logan, with no mention of a husband in her life story anywhere. What is known is her impact as a pioneer in the beauty industry. This during World War I, the Great Depression, and World War II. She has been celebrated for coining the slogan, now is the time to plan your future by learning a depression-proof business. She also said, as long as there are women in the world, there will be beauty establishments. Washington's company grew to a value of nearly a half a million dollars by the mid-1940s. At the time of her death in 1953, at the age of 63, her business was worth millions.